great. It's not that. So I'm not going to talk about it. We're going we're to play a little game that I've not played for many, many years. So what you're going to do is you're all going to line up with your back to the board, mm -hmm. and I'm going to stick a bit of paper with a word on your back, right? And you have to walk around and ask other people questions about what the word is. And you can't look at your back, and you can't say the word on other people's backs, but you can give them clues. Well, once I've stuck one on your back, you can you can move, so you don't need to stand there anymore. There's one for you anymore. If one of them falls off, you can... So what, why do we talk about, what, why is student-centered seen as being a, a positive thing? It's more they have to work harder to get the answer instead of the, the teacher giving them the answer. Good. So what, why do you want people to, to work harder? They remember it better. Great. Mm -hmm. This is a, a quote from Carl Rogers, and I've heard of him, a psychologist, and he says, the only learning which significantly influences behavior is self discovery mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, great. So, with the person next to you, or people next to you, two questions. What was the purpose? What, why did we do that activity? And secondly, what do you think we're going to do for the rest of this hour? Student -centered, this was a student-centered activity. And we're going to teach, and finally, you're going to test us again. <laughs> All right, let's discuss. <laughs> so, <laughs> De Delia thinks we're doing this because it's test. Teach test. What? What? Uh, Sophie? What? What do you? What was the purpose? First of all, what? Why did we do this? You, you mean? Why did I get you to do this activity? Ah, uh, uh, um, because you want to check our understanding about the definition of the methodologies. Okay, maybe. Yeah. Um, well, why might I want you to know what these words mean right at the beginning of a lesson? Lead on to the next part of the lesson. So if side has turned just we just did a student centered activity which was essentially a giant discovery task for what we're going to get now, uh, which I don't know. Okay. It's right. also uh -huh. a way to uh, just turn now you I think cited from somebody and then the best way is self-discovery. Self -discovery. We are discovering something by ourselves, so <laughs> so, can I ask which of you, I've got two readings, one is slightly more difficult, one is slightly easier, who would like to have the slightly easier one? One, two, three, alright, good, uh, one, two, three, you guys can go and read this one in a second, one, two, three, four, you guys can go and read this one in a minute. I will give you five, seven minutes to read and take lots of notes on the content. After you have read, someone from the other group will ask you questions about what you've just find the answers to these questions? By asking them. Great, well, by, you can ask Anwar, mm -hmm. right? Okay. 
And Delia, where can you get the answers to these questions? You can ask Delia. Great, you can ask Delia and talk about Great, all right, I'll give you five to ten minutes to ask the question. If you don't get all the answers, it's fine, we'll discuss them afterwards. Uh, what are some of the advantages of class-based learning? Right. It provides students with framework and structures. Okay. So you give away what? Making a, a framework of structure to know uh, Oh wait, that's the next words. one. Yeah, the or advantage. What are the advantages? Or something that students need to do to students which require them to use the language. What are some of the advantages of class-based learning? Right. It provides Students with framework and structures. Okay. So you give them what? Making a, a framework. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, we'll talk about number the last one. The third one. Was that it? That's all right. Let's go through them really, really quickly. So I think you both had, first of all, what, what is a task or what's task based learning? Any more student centered approach so you can introduce a flat authentic English to complete meaningful tasks. Okay, what, what does it mean by meaningful? Something which is applicable to everyday, everyday life. So, um, booking a ticket, like getting a bus, something like that. Great. Or if you're three years old, what might be meaningful? Asking you to ask go to the toy <laughs> Yeah, yeah, asking for a toy. Yeah. yeah. Any, anything like that, right? What is Unmeaningful, do you think that we often do in our? So can you think of any tasks that you guys do a lot? Dictation. Go on. Dictation, sorry. Or dictation. Dictation, like in public school teacher always say, okay, I'm going to read a word. You're going to stand up and read the word. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Oh, yeah, it's not meaningful because maybe you might not even know. Have what you, you ever done in a? Those of you who teach kids, have you ever done a, a an activity where you have a flashcard and you go, what's this? Yeah. yeah. Mm. What color is it? Mm. Yeah? Mm. Right, what color is it? Again, unless you, you're blind, <laughs> right? It's not a very useful thing. We're the same with, like, mm. what's this? But it's like, mm. can I have a uh, something? Mm. Right, and you have to pass it out. That's a bit more mm. meaningful. I don't think I gave you this article, but there's another one saying an inauthentic task, or a task where there's no gap is missing to you. Mm. What day is it today? Mm. Ah. Yeah. Oh. It is. Wednesday. <laughs> right. But we all know it's Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so that's not a very useful, there's no gap there. Mm -hmm. Right? We all have the same. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what, what did I just get you to do? What was the purpose of that? So what we are doing is I said information gap. Great. Mm -hmm. There's an information gap. So very quickly, how did it feel doing an information gap activity? We, did you enjoy that or would you have preferred if I had a, a PowerPoint and told you about them? That's the first question. How much Negotiation of meaning, did you find there was when you were speaking to someone else? <coughs> right? And the third one was, how much did you communicate during that? Yeah. 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 I forgot as well. So, all right, let's talk about it together. Okay. So first of all, how, how did it feel to do that? Good. Yeah, good. good. Okay, what did you what did you like about it, Sophie? Um, uh, I, I I felt less stressful because I don't need to read all the materials. I just uh, read my part and waiting for others to share their opinions. <laughs> okay. And, and that's also something. Yeah. yeah. Did you? I think someone here had a point about the different skills mm. that you were using. What was that? Yeah. So some of them is reading. Some of them is asking and listening. Speaking. Good. So what, what skills did you use? First of all, the first one was? Reading. Really? And then? Taking notes, writing. Right, writing. so writing. writing and then? Speaking. Speaking. Answer. And listening. listening. And then listening. finally, what did you do? One more thing a second time. Similar. Writing. Writing again. Um, you have to write the answer. So you use all four skills mm -hmm. in one mm -hmm. activity. Okay. How much negotiation of meaning was there? Did you did you ask for clarification or uh, quite a bit? Some of, yeah, I think some, sometimes I would try to create my own example to make it clear for me. Yeah, make the and um, that information gap, reason gap, opinion gap. I think we need our own examples to try and remember. Great. Yeah. And last one then. How, how much communication was there going on? Quite a lot. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. So. Almost semi-final thing, just for maybe two or three minutes. Who is teaching a class not today? Who's teaching a class next week? Next week. You two? All right. So let's do maybe you three. 
and you four, can you talk about what topic you have and how could you include kind of a gap? Gap. Gap. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. So you maybe just maybe if you want to stand up, actually. Right. So you four over there. You three here. How can you? How can you get a kind of gap? Another oh, two. Two. I, I don't know. know. I have not. No, no, no. no, so no, you, you've got one, no, right? So you, you can talk to three people. Oh, okay. and you've got a class, right? So you can talk to two people. Okay, I'm going to say hello. Okay, I'm saying all that. And then you ask them, what do you think should be the first thing you should do? And then they're like, well, download the app. Yeah, how to use. All right, do you want to have a seat? And we'll wrap up. I know you won't have that. Because you've got maybe some seeds of ideas. So, Josh, do you want to tell us quickly what what did you come up with that you might be able to use next week? We talk more about like Darlene's. Great, that's fine. Um, she's doing about technology in EF. So it's like how to download an EF app. So she can give some students the information about how to download it and how to teach the others how to download the app. So um, the, using the instructions that they have, like uh, really simplify it. Like even like how do you turn on the phone? And like that. Yeah. Great. So maybe different students have got instructions on different apps and they have to yeah, yeah, yeah. teach yeah. each other. Yeah. Okay, all right, so just sort of very, very finally to wrap up then. So what types of gap did we have in, in today's training session? What, what did we do at the very, very beginning? Information gap. Okay, so what was the gap? Yeah, okay, how could you use that with young learners? Vocabulary word. vocabulary word on the back, and they ask you know, yes/no questions, or they just describe it. Great. Okay. It doesn't even have to be a word, does it? What else could it be? Picture. Picture. Okay. So they don't need to read to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And then what did you do afterwards? You looked at the words together, and you. Good. Topic. All right. Mm -hmm. So what was that then? What kind of gap was that? Um, listen. And then what? What was this? Yeah. Another context. So great. Someone pointed out that. Obviously today we were using different types of gaps in the training. What was the purpose of me using information or different kinds of gaps while training you on this? What, what do you think? The, why did I do that? Yeah. Yeah, so we, we were aware of what type of gaps you use. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you just told us, we might have not really mm -hmm. been aware of what, what it was. Yeah. Okay, so obviously that's all the advantages that we spoke about, but what was the advantage of me using the, the type of activities that we were also discussing? Then we have something to share. And we know how it's going to feel when they're doing it. Right, yeah. okay. Why well, is it important to know how people feel? So when you're planning, you can anticipate problems? Yeah, mm. You can think in the student's position. Great, so I think all of these things. Does anyone know what this kind of training is called? Mm -hmm. The topic of the training is also how you run the training. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, task-based learning. Well, it is, right? But why did I, well, why did I use task-based learning for task-based learning? Right? I could have used PPP to tell you about task-based learning, couldn't I? But I didn't. You, you ask us to experience what uh, yes. task-based learning is, and then... You right. are both student and teacher. At right. position. Yeah. So it's called loop input mm. is the name loop for it. So loop input. And the idea is part of experiential learning. So mm. again, it's this idea that if you experience it, then you'd be more likely to... All right, good. So hopefully you've got more kind of ideas about that. Hopefully you can include some tasks. Sorry, I went over my time. We take it 10 minutes.